Hi, you're with Chandeep at Goodly once again. And in this video, I'm going to talk about six things that you should actually do before you complete your Power BI report. Let's start. All right, tip number one is about including helpful documentation for your users. So when you're actually about to complete your model or just completed the model, it's actually ideal to come to the data modeling tab, click on the relevant tables and the measures that you have created, and write some notes for the users to understand what exactly have you done so that it will be helpful for them to navigate and understand the model a little better. Take a look. Maybe I can just actually click on the interviews uh, table right here. In the interviews table, if I just click on that table, I have this description right here, which is where I can write some helpful notes. This could be notes about granularity, about several things that explain that particular data or the table. You can actually put all of these notes right here. You can also do that for the measure. So if I just maybe click on any particular measure, I can actually click on that particular measure, maybe application still date. I can actually write some description here that actually talks about certain things that the user would need to keep in mind while using the measure or anything that you'd like to describe in that particular measure. Maybe even the calculation itself. You can even copy the DAX code right here in the description so that the user, if they understand DAX, they can actually take a look at the DAX code. Whatever that might be, but the documentation is super important for the users to understand that. Now, once you actually provide anything that is there in the description window right here, when the user actually takes a uh, look at the model at the service or even takes a look at the model in Power BI Desktop and he hovers the mouse on top of that table or the measure, he sees that very documentation that we wrote it over there in the description box. Take a look, this table contains was something that I wrote it over there and that is also what I can see it right here. The other helpful kind of documentation is for developers. Like your fellow developer who then maybe changes or makes a tweak into your model, you should really understand that what exactly have you done in that entire model. So maybe if you've created any particular set of measures in the measures table, you can actually go pick up your measures and include some helpful documentation in your measures as to what exactly the measure is doing. Take a look at this. This measure is about application still date for a particular stage. And I have included some helpful notes for the user to actually understand that. All right, that was all about documentation. Let's just move on to the next one. All right, tip number two is about arranging the tables in an orderly fashion. Now, once somebody takes a look at your data model, he or she should be able to understand that which are the lookup tables and how those lookup tables are slicing and dicing your fact tables. A general good habit is to put up the lookup tables on the top and then the fact tables at the bottom. Take a look at my model. I have my positions. I have a little sorting table and then I have a calendar. All of these three are lookup tables and they're actually filtering my interviews data. In case you're working on a model that has a lot of tables, it's a very, very good habit to create multiple pages at the bottom and branch out your analysis into multiple smaller data models so that the entire model is more understandable and a lot more manageable. All right, tip number three is about hiding irrelevant columns and the tables that the user should not actually see. A lot of times you would create the columns or the columns are going to be present in the data model that are not really relevant for the user to be able to work with them. Uh, what you can actually do is when you're there in the data modeling tab and you hover the mouse on top of any particular column, you get this I button. And if you click on that particular I button, the column gets hidden to the user once the user is actually working in the visualization or the report tab. Now, generally speaking, you would hide the columns which are the key columns, um, any particular relationship that you have created. And on the many side, you would actually hide that particular column and ask the user to use that relationship from the lookup table or the master table. You would also create a couple of disconnected table. All of those disconnected tables, if not relevant, should be actually hidden from the user. Those are just meant for your calculations. It just presents a lot more cleaner and minimal layout to the user to be able to work with the model and make lesser mistakes while creating the visuals. All right, the next tip is about grouping the visuals. So whenever you're trying to build a visualization on the screen and you have a lot of smaller objects, it's a good idea to actually group all of them together so that they're all considered as a single block of a visual. So what you can actually do is you can actually select multiple visuals. So for instance, I'm actually trying to group my interviews detailed table right here the little back button right here, a little filter here, and a little text box at the bottom. I can actually go ahead and I can select all of these visuals together and use the shortcut control G to actually group them together. Now, once I have grouped all of them, it's actually considered as one single block of visuals. And while I'm actually moving this visual across my screen, I would not have any problems, nor would I actually leave out any particular visual. 
All right, the next trick is my absolute favorite. It's called locking the visuals. And it's very, very helpful when you're especially trying to display your visualizations to somebody while working in Power BI Desktop. So what happens is that while you're working in Power BI Desktop and somebody is trying to navigate through your entire screen and maybe select a couple of visuals, accidentally they may misplace the visual on the screen. Maybe I'm just trying to navigate on this particular chart and by mistake I just select the chart and I move it on the side. Now I would then have to correct the position of the chart back once again, maybe by pressing Ctrl Z or whatever that might be. Now I want the user to be able to interact with the visual, select the visual, but not really be able to change the position of the visual. What you can actually do is come over to the view tab right here. In the view tab, if you actually click on lock objects, all of these objects which are there, the visuals which are there on the screen are going to be permanently locked and they would not move and change their positions, but the interactivity of the visual is still going to be turned on. Take a look, I'm able to interact with any particular slicing and dicing right here, but if I try to move this, uh, this would actually not move, nor would any particular visual move from the entire visualization that I have. This is actually very, very helpful. All right, my final tip is about proofreading and auditing your own model. And I have a few tips to help you proofread and audit a whole lot better. Number one is that you should actually consider yourself to be the business user and try to take a look at your own model and see that is the information and the graphs and the charts that I have created make sense for the business user to consume or not. My second tip is that use a fresh pair of eyes. You should always consider showing your model to a friend or a colleague so that he can or she can actually find out the mistakes that you have not been able to see. My final tip is that you should actually give yourself some time and maybe some gap, maybe a few hours or the next day to proofread the model because you may not be able to find the mistakes on the very same day. Do not proofread with a tired mind. All right, those were my six things to do before you actually complete your Power BI report. If you have any questions around this, please feel free to put down a comment and I'll be glad to reply. In the end, a quick shout about my DAX and my Power Query courses in case you're starting out with Power BI and you need help with learning fundamentals on Power Query and on DAX and then proceed on to solving more challenging, more sophisticated problems of your own data, I will highly recommend that you take a look at my courses. It's gonna be highly beneficial. Thanks so much for watching this and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Cheers, bye.